Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this video is coming up uh, for two reasons. Number one, I'm going to try and figure out how to make a heat shield for this IBOS um, filament dryer. This is the uh, broken base that I got sent originally. Thankfully, they did give me a, a replacement. <laughs> I don't know what happened in shipping, but the front got caved in. And the bottom just got destroyed. Like, this got caved in a lot as well. Oh, there we go. Uh, one of the legs got smashed off. Uh, I don't know. And this plastic here is like super brittle. I don't know. Maybe I can 3D print a new base um, and some new feet. I don't know. We'll see. More importantly, as you've seen uh, in a previous video, I'll link that somewhere down in the uh, description and or at the end of the video. This has a flaw. I think it produces really good results as far as good airflow and good heat and that type of thing. But this part and this part blow right exactly where the filament is. So my experience and apparently a few other people is that because the heat blows directly onto the filament, it heats up a single spot. And even when you're printing and it's spooling the filament, it still can get pretty hot in that spot. Um, so especially with PTE, PETG seems to be uh, a bit of an issue with me. Anything time, anytime we're getting more than 50 degrees Celsius, it's giving, uh, giving me some issues. So I've actually stopped using it. So I'm hoping, 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 uh, I can do this to help get some, uh, filament going, uh, you know, still working on my little, uh, little dino there. Hopefully I'll be done pretty soon. Yeah, it's going to look pretty cool. Uh, if ever the uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Woodbutcher says, get this crap out of here, uh, I think I might just donate it to the local school. I'm pretty sure it's an elementary school. I'm pretty sure they'd be pretty uh, pleased with something like that. You know, five rolls of film. Uh, yeah, yeah, filament. Five rolls? Somewhere around there. So let's, uh, I'm going to do some measurements. What I want to do is, oh, and I found this old cheating I had. I have a bunch of... Um, heavy gauge ducting I used for my dust collection system. So I undid this and kind of flattened it out. So I think if I cut this and make a little shield that goes over here, which will deflect the heat out around the filament rather than the heat going right on it, I think that actually might work. I can probably just kind of, you know, squeeze it in here, use these to hold it in place. I don't know. Let me uh, get the tin snips and uh, bending thingies out and Let's see what we can do. Oh, also, this is a new mic. So tell me if my audio quality is better, worse, or the same as when I'm just using the internal mic or when I had my other lavalier mic. So throw a little comment down in the description if, uh, if what I'm doing is helping out a little bit. Thank you. All right, so we cut the little piece of tin here. We got about four inches, uh, maybe a little bit more. I figured out I can do about a half inch bend on either side. And we have just a little over uh, three inches in between these things. So that's good. And really, I only need to cover this part and deflect the, uh, the heat away. Uh, this part seems to exit okay. So uh, basically, I'm just going to make a little thing that's going to sit down. I'll probably cut out a little piece here, a little bend there. We'll figure it out. Let me go uh, cut my fingers. I'll probably do that. These dinosaurs are always a pain in the butt. They're getting in the way all the time. Okay, so my whole blank was about 12 inches long, so I cut it into two six-inch sections. I then took a, a knife and scribed at my half-inch line, and I made a relief cut here. So this either I'll cut out, or I'm just going to leave it hanging out because it will be able to sit in between here. But I think on one side I should cut it out for sure so I don't, restrict airflow too much. I did it on both sides. So the next thing I need to do is take my trusty handy dandy grandfather's bendy thingy. Uh, I don't even know what these, these are like, there we go. Made in the USA, Malco S2. Uh, it's a sheet metal bender as far as I'm aware of. Uh, he used to use this for working on combines. So give me a minute, let me do a couple bends and then I'll bring you back. All right, so that fits in there quite well. It's got a little bit of play, but it's gonna shield that filament from uh, 
the majority of the heat going there. I might uh, just kind of bend these up at the end, or I might fold them over. Oh, well, not, not a bad idea. Maybe fold those sharp edges over because I'm known to hurt myself. Um, so anyways, that seems to be pretty good that way. I'm probably just definitely going to sort of relief cut this. Uh, no, I'm going to... Yeah, so it's just at the other end. Same with this. So I don't, I don't want to block any airflow here. So I'll, I'll make a little relief cut. Uh, again, the spools of filament are going to be over this way. So I might even bring it in a little bit. So time to cut those pieces. And then I'll show you the final, hopefully, final component. So now I have the unit on. And it's working. Got some heat coming out of it. If I put my hand right here, it's a bit of a gentle heat. I can kind of feel coming off of the off of the metal there, but it's it's not crazy. Here, I can feel it blowing right on my hand, especially right there. So right at that spot, and that's right where the filament would always just kind of melt into a big ball into, on the spool. So I can feel a little bit of warmth in that spot. Come out to the side, and that's where I feel the, the warmth. So it's gonna hit the side, curl up and move around. I think some convection currents there. I can feel the heat coming out from this part, and I can feel the heat coming out from that part. So I think what I'm going to do is take a, an old sort of half dead spool of filament, use this part in case whatever restriction happens here kills something, that way it's already dead, and see how that works. I'll get back to you in a little bit. I'm going to let this run for uh, a couple hours type of thing, see how it does. And I'm going to run it probably a little hotter than I should and see if I can really melt up some filament. If it doesn't melt it, I'm going to be much happier. And all it takes is some sheet metal, some tin snips, and some bendy pliers. Sorry, guys. I don't know. I always know the name of things. And you can fix this design flaw that this unit has from my perspective. Again, I'm, I'm not affiliated with these guys. Uh, I paid for this out of my own money. Uh, so I want this thing to work. And I really don't want to have to buy another one because it was a little pricey. So let me uh, work on this and uh, I'll get back to you with some results. I came into one interesting challenge with this. Dang it. Um, this is up a little too high. The roller, I <laughs> hadn't thought about this. Because it's on two rollers here, it dips down and it's rubbing kind of in the middle. I've tried bending in a couple different ways. A little bit of a hollow here seems to help a little bit, um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it back out to the shop and just cut these down a little bit. So maybe not quite half an inch, maybe three eighths. Is that right? Yeah, about three eighths of an inch. So give me a minute. Let me go give that a try, and hopefully you'll have an update in a few hours when I've had this thing going. Okay, here we go. So, I don't know if you can see, but it just barely clears. I cut a little relief on there and a little bit of an angle. So I got definitely a little bit more space. And this thing, well, as good as it rolled, it did roll before it rolls like that now. So let me uh, cook this up and go from there. Okay, so this has been going for, uh, I set it for six hours, two hours, about four and a half hours. I did it for a little while before. I checked it in between, seems to be working better. Uh, so I did some modifications. I made a new one of those little guys. Tabs were cut lower, probably about three eighths of an inch. On the side, I'm not sure if you can see, I'll pull it out in a second, but you can see there's a little up right there. So that little tab that I, I cut out previously on the last one, uh, I went out a little bit further uh, with the bendy uh, thingamajigger and I bent it up. Uh, just to give it some more place there and then same thing on this side it just seemed logical and it helps to lock it in between each of these little tabs so it can't move around other than that let's put you down here for a second I'm gonna get my temperature gun and we're gonna check some temperatures inside the housing quickly and then on the spool of filament to see if there's a temperature difference between the bottom, front and back, and the top. So, give me a minute. Okay, we're back. I turned the machine off, so we're gonna check on the inside here. We're at 49 degrees. 
on the top. We're at 41 on the top, okay? On the side here, we're at 41. Let's roll this part to us. And we're at 47. Okay, so definitely hotter on the bottom. And this was part of the problem before. Here we're at 46, that's kind of the back side. 41. 40. It should be almost dead top again. 39, starting to cool off a little bit. So I'm gonna pull this off of here. Oh, we try to do all this stuff with one hand. Okay, the metal says 21. Yeah, there's, remember it's reflective, emissivity, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, let's try the little, try the little roller thing, 44. I'm just gonna feel it with my hand. Yeah, it's definitely warmer. And the metal's gonna cool off fairly quick with the air blowing on it. So, it's not perfect. Again, I think this particular dryer, because of the way it works and where the uh, heat comes from, I definitely think you're, you're gonna want to do a few things. Number one, don't run it without something protecting the filament. Otherwise, you're gonna have a goobered up filament. Let me just feel it here. I'm just feeling on there. So there's no signs that it's been goobered up at all. And I had uh, I had this on for probably, yeah, I'd say in total four and a half hours, because I did a little bit before with the first uh, little pan. So no signs that I had that happen. I had it at 55 degrees. Inside, as you saw, it was 40 degrees at the top, 49 at the bottom. So there is that differential. If you're gonna be using this thing, I would, if you can, number one, every once in a while come through and rotate it. Uh, it would do better, I think, if you're uh, going to be uh, printing, because then it'll, it'll have that nice little loop there. Let's, uh, let's call this improved. The other thing is, I don't know what this would do for the overall components here. Again, the plastic feels warm, but not, like, doesn't feel like I cooked it. Let's have a look underneath. Let's see if I fried anything up here. No, the sticker's still on there. So I don't think I cooked anything up uh, more than uh, it normally would have been, I think. I hope. Well, it's a little warmer underneath uh, where the pan was compared to over here. So, yeah, I would not run this thing at all unless you're very close by right at it design flaw big design flaw I think it would have been better to have a smaller heater yeah smaller heater that maybe has to work a little bit longer put it at the back um, and have it blowing that way and that way I think that might have been better then, you know, that would have had a, a little convection thing happening rather than blowing right in the center, right on the filament. Because unless that filament is spooling out, that's just not a good thing. Anyways, if this is a little bit helpful for you, if you've enjoyed any of this, if it's going to give you some better idea on the Cyclopes filament dryer, which I am a little disappointed in, but hey, you know, we, uh, we try these things, we buy these things, and sometimes it's uh, great, sometimes it's okay. Sometimes you got to do a little bit of a uh, little cutting some tin. So I'm going to cut another one for the other side. I honestly think that if you're going to be doing this, only do one side at a time. And, you know, it's down to a single roll filament uh, dryer. I don't know. Maybe not. If you put one on both sides, I think it'll be okay. Is this gonna, yeah, it'll fit both sides. Ah, shoot. Okay, have a good one. Go out, make a mess. Have some fun. 3D print, woodwork, garden, whatever you need to do. Let's go have some life and enjoy it. Catch you on the next one.